And I want to welcome uh, you all to this inaugural induction for the National Society of Leadership and Success. Did I say national? I didn't say local, I said national. And it's a, a great honor to be here to welcome you. I'd like to take this time out to say how proud I am as uh, the uh, interim director of advising and academic support that of your achievements and accomplishments. Uh, I heard Dr. Brown say one time that we just can't waste a perfect pandemic. And I just, I'm very proud of our student development, Mr. Worthy and the student development team that they have still continued to provide uh, opportunities even during the COVID pandemic for our students to showcase their leadership and to have professional development. Uh, it is an honorable distinction uh, that I am with the NSL, NSLS, uh, have you, that you all have provided step-by-step -step program for members to build your leadership upon completion of the program. Uh, you will receive uh, your leadership certificate and take your place among the top student leaders at your prospective campuses and across the country. Uh, and you can remember that you got your star right here as a Southwest Saluki. And I'm very proud of you and I want to welcome each of you and your uh, support team, uh, your colleagues, and all, also to our VP and to our other colleagues. We wanna say how very proud we are of you. And I wanna just say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Worthy. You're welcome, Mr. Claxton. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Sierra Ship. Um, our chapter of the NSLS was founded to help our members create the success they wanted by enabling them to engage in reflection and self exploration. The NSLS provides members with the tools for action, inspiration to hold them accountable, and motivation to achieve our goals. This is a place for members to join in with other student leaders and student success networking teams where they can interact with one another to create and achieve personal goals. To our inductees, after today's ceremony, you are officially an inducted member of the NSLS. Your completion of the membership requirements is just the first step to a larger journey you now share with other fellow members. To show everyone more about the journey and what it looks like, we're gonna watch a brief video from the national office. We don't have any volume, Sierra. I am sorry, probably because I muted. So let's try it again. Oops. All right. Welcome back. I'm sure the journey you've embarked on has been full of ups, downs, twists, and turns. Maybe you accomplished everything you set out to. Maybe there's still some work left to do. Whether you realize it or not, you're a very different person now than you were when you started this journey. But now, here we are. Induction! And a big congratulations is certainly in order. You learned to communicate with team members of different backgrounds and orientation, got introduced to the six foundations of leadership at your LTD, set smart goals for yourself in your SNT, and heard advice from some of the world's best leaders and speaker broadcasts. Now you're ready to become a leader of tomorrow. And to mark this occasion, people from all over the country have sent in their congratulations. First and foremost, congratulations on being a fully inducted member. My favorite NSLS memory is being able to hear from great examples of successful people. My induction ceremony. I like seeing that all my hard work had paid off and I'm on the right track. If I could go back in time and give myself one piece of advice, it was just to never give up. Having a clear vision of your dreams and goals and take small action steps towards them every day. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations to the newly inducted class. Good luck to everybody out there. Welcome to Congratulations. But this isn't the end of the line. Even though you now have access to inducted member benefits, you can't stop here. 
As we've discussed over the last few months, the best leaders are confident, but always hungry to learn more. You've conquered your first goal. What's next? Are you going to rest on your laurels and call it a day? Or will you tackle the advanced and executive leadership certifications or even complete the additional work to earn college credit for each certification you complete with the NSLS? If you've learned anything, you know that now is the time to seize this opportunity to better yourself for the future by learning the tools that shape a true leader. Maybe you'll be a future business owner, the next great politician, and an inspirational educator in the making. You have the foundation to do anything, but now is the time to build upon it. If you keep working, keep learning, keep honing in on your skills, there's no goal you can't achieve. When the world cracks the door open, make sure you bust through it. We can't wait to see where you end up. But in the meantime, congratulations. You've earned it. Okay. So on this screen here, you see a list of the different benefits um, that you can receive from joining NSLS. The benefits you've received thus far are only the beginning of something much larger that will continue for years to come. Not only while you're here at Southwest, but also long after you graduate. You may ask yourself, how can I use these skills of what I learned in NSLS and apply them to my collegiate career now? I encourage each of you to go after the advanced and executive leadership certifications or the credit pathway. Apply to be members of the executive board, get involved on campus and push yourself to the next level. Please accept my heartfelt, heartfelt congratulations for what you have achieved thus far and for the great things I'm certain each of you will achieve in the future. And here's also some of the things you can do of what's next. As mentioned, like joining the executive board, asking for letters of recommendation and much more. Thank you, Ms. Ship. And next on the agenda, we will have our guest speaker, our keynote speaker for today's induction. Dr. Carlos Smith is a native of Collins, Mississippi. Uh, he served as uh, Southwest Director of Institution Effectiveness and the Quality Enhancement Plan QEP Administrator for Southwest as well. He served as an associate dean for humanities, social sciences, and mathematics prior to joining Southwest Tennessee Community College. He served as dean of curriculum and instruction and special assistance for strategy initiatives to the vice president of academic and student affairs at Tougaloo College, a historical black college. Before beginning his career in education, Dr. Smith has served in elementary secondary education as a teacher, uh, interventionist and principal. Additionally, Dr. Smith, a certified uh, SAC COC evaluator, has experienced developing curriculum for the Boys and Girls Club of Central Mississippi in Covington County, along with the Mississippi Secretary of State's Office, specifically election training. He's also developed a successful career in the areas of curriculum and instruction assessment and evaluation, strategic planning, and organization effectiveness. Dr. Smith um, on many um, fraternity, civic, and um, other boards and leadership teams at Southwest. He also served as a senator for PESO, our professional administrative staff organization, and a member of the inaugural class of the Southwest Leadership Academy. Without further ado, um, I will turn it over to Dr. Carlos Smith. Thank you so much uh, for that. I greatly appreciate the the um, uh, the introduction and uh, and the picture. Um, I need to start putting uh, a caption at the bottom of that picture. So it's pre-COVID. Uh, that's a pre-COVID picture. We look a little bit different uh, here in this uh, new day and time uh, that we're in. Again, thank you for the invitation and, and thank you for uh, the introduction. The test of a man is the fight that he makes, the grit that he daily shows, the way he stands upon his feet 
and takes life's numerous bumps and blows. A coward can smile when there's not to fear noting his progress bars, but it takes a man to stand and cheer while the other fellow stars. It isn't the victory after all, but the fight that a brother makes. A man when driven against the wall still stands erect and takes the blows of fate. With his head held high, bleeding, bruised, and pale, is the man who will win fate defied, for he isn't afraid to fail. Again, I say thank you for this opportunity to speak with you, a group of leaders. I am always excited to see others take on such a responsibility as this, for we know and you have learned that leadership is a heavy responsibility. Note that earlier I identified you as leaders. I did not contextualize it by adding terms such as young or student or even by acknowledging your ethnicity. Far too often we marginalize leadership by adding additional descriptors. However, leadership is leadership. Leading is leading. Once you began to lead, your sphere of influence is only limited by your imagination, your time, and your attitude. With that thought, I will speak with you on the topic of the imagination, time, and attitude of a leader. When I was growing up, there was a popular children's show called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This show fostered the idea of being neighborly, or in other words, being kind to one another. However, there was another concept of the show that involved Mr. Roger activating a train set, or a trolley set rather, and going to the neighborhood or land of make-believe. The critical component of this neighborhood was the ability for Mr. Rogers to cover difficult topics. The beauty of the neighborhood was that Mr. Rogers and the characters in the land of make-believe could imagine a myriad of solutions for any topic. They were not limited by the real world. One would argue that their imagination was able to run free on how to solve many issues. As a leader, you will be faced with a plethora of topics and issues. Some will be simple, others not so much. Sometimes you will have more resources at your fingertips than you need and in other times you will have just you and your imagination. Someone once said if you can dream it, it can happen. Lesson number one, use your imagination as a framework for solutions. Guess what? One resource you will always have will be your imagination. You have heard it said many times, do not be afraid to think outside of the box. I have discovered this is true. I now understand after years of being a leader that sometimes you do not have a box, so you must think outside of one. Here's another freebie. Many of our solutions are within us. Think about that. Many of our solutions are within us. We must dare to dream, to imagine. As you embark on this journey of leadership, use your imagination. I promise you, it will never fail. Civil rights leader Jesse Jackson said, time is neutral and does not change things. With courage and initiative, leaders change things. Here's lesson number two. Time equals opportunity. You say, Smith, that makes no sense. Well, let me explain this to you. Time allows for several things to occur. Time can allow change chances to pass by. Time can be wasted. Time can even be used to do unpositive things. Yet, for a leader, time is precious because it allows for planning and execution. 
Time is valuable to us because we are able to demonstrate calm in midst of storms, peace in midst of confusions and patience in midst of anxieties. Time is a leader's friend. As a leader, we must engage time to demonstrate who we are and why people have chosen to follow us. You do realize people do not have to follow you, right? That's a lesson for another day, but it's something to keep in your mind. We must be mindful of the time we have in leadership and use it positively to impact our piece of the world. I heard an old preacher say once, you are either going in a storm or already in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. He would end, of course, by saying, no matter what or where you are, use the time to keep on praising him. So my takeaway from that is take advantage of each second of each moment. Do not waste the time that you have been given. Do not be wasteful reflecting negatively. Always look forward positively. I am a Southerner, if you don't know it by now, and born and raised in Mississippi, which I make no apologies about nor have regrets. I was taught that education can take me far, which it has, again, no regrets. I have accomplishments that speak far beyond my years on this earth. But one thing that I discovered is something beyond education. Your attitude dictates where you go as well. There's a Southern adage that says, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. In other words, your attitude means a lot. Our final lesson for today, lesson number three, attitude defines your leadership. Yes, I know that many of you believe that with this induction, you will be leading the world. One part of that is true. This induction and the rigorous training gives you the capacity or capability to lead the world. Yet, if your attitude is not well adjusted or positive, or if you walk around, as the old folks used to say, looking like something stank, yep, I said stank, not stink, then you will, be, you will not be engaged as a leader. And then guess what? All of this preparation would have been in vain. When we become bona fide leaders, meaning we receive the certificates, the accolades like this, or our successes began to stack up, then sometimes our attitudes take an ugly turn. I want you to take extra care with your attitude. Leadership is a blessing, a gift, a treasure. You never want to be selfish with your leadership, nor lord it over others. You must always seek to keep a spirit of humility. Serve when asked. Lead when possible. Consult when you can. Never be brass or boastful. Always count it a blessing when people choose to follow you or place their trust with you. In the poem, If, by Sir Rudyard Kipling, there's a line that says, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, it is promoting the idea to stay humble, to stay a part of the people. You never want to lose the common touch. For it was that very spirit of service that allowed you to be in this place, this place of leadership. In closing, yep, not a lot I have to say are very long-winded. From one leader to another, I say welcome. The world needs more of us. There are plenty of problems that need facing. 
issues that need resolving. Each of us have enough room where we can dance our dance and play our part and then jump in and assist each other. Take this opportunity to look around and know that you, sister leader, brother leader, have a cadre of support, a network, a team. Understand you are never alone. And certainly, if there's anything I can ever do for you, I am more than ready to assist because leaders help leaders. With that, I leave you with this poem. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to weep, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up though, the pace seems slow. You might succeed with another blow. Off the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggle has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned way too late as the night slipped down how close he'd been to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt and you never can tell how close you are it may be near when it seems so far so stick to the fight when your heart is hit it's when things seem worst that you must not quit congratulations and have a good afternoon Thank you very much, Dr. Carlos Smith. Let's give Dr. Smith a virtual round of applause. Let's show Dr. Smith some love for that awesome presentation. This just speaks volumes of the type of professionals that we have here at Southwest. We don't have to go outside and hire someone else. We got them right here at Southwest. Again, kudos to you, Dr. Smith, and I will turn it over to Ms. Tamara Boylan. And you hold on, Dr. Smith, don't you leave. Thank you. At this time, we would like to begin our recognition festivities for the afternoon with a few special awards. We will begin with the honorary membership awards. This award is given to faculty, staff, or administrators who embody the mission of the National Society of Leadership and Success and demonstrate leadership qualities in a personal and professional capacity. These individuals have played an integral role in fostering opportunities for growth and development among the administration and our students. They each have made a huge impact in the advising and academic support community and touched the lives of our students each day. Our first honorary member is our keynote speaker, Dr. Carlos Smith. Thank you so Please much. Please join oh me in a call to recognize our honorary member. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next honorary member, we would like to continue our recognition with the presentation of our Excellence in Teaching Award. This award is given to individuals who teach with passion, inspire students beyond the classroom, demonstrate dedication to developing students beyond academic qualifications, or who make a positive difference in the lives of NSL, NSLS members. Um, this 
award is selected from the actual NSLS student members. And please join me in applause to recognize our honorary member teaching in excellence award, Dr. Eddie Baker. Thank you all. Uh, I'm very humbled and honored to receive this. Thank you, Dr. Baker. Last but certainly not least, our final special award is the Excellence in Service to Students Award. This award is given to a non-faculty member on campus who exemplifies leadership and mentorship and has demonstrated commitment to bettering the lives of our students. Please join me in applause to recognize our honorary member for service and uh, excellence to students, Ms. Courtney Gibson. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. It's an honor and like Dr. Smith said, imagination is a framework. That's what I do for our students. Thank you, Courtney. And next I'm going to turn it over to Emma Rutledge. Congratulations to all of the um, honorees today. So to our students, today we are here to celebrate your continued leadership experience. Each student member here today has gained personal insight and perspective as you have completed your steps to induction. You have made commitments to yourself and to each other and to your communities to create positive change and leave your legacy. You saw and received motivation and resources from this year's speaker series. You have set goals and launched action steps together, empowering and supporting one another during your success networking team meetings. Upon fulfilling the basic components of the program, without question, you could say that each of you in this virtual room are even more in touch with who you are as a leader and you are ready to pay it forward to serve within your campus and beyond. Today, you reflect the principles of the NSLS and we honor you and welcome you as an inducted member. You have made a commitment to pursue success, take action, seek and clarify your purpose. You have embraced the idea that more can be achieved when we work together. You have made a commitment to always create a shared vision, challenge the status quo, inspire positive action, empower others, and see constant improvement. Congratulations. I will now pass it over to Ms. Tamara. Thank you, Emma. At this time, we will have a student success story from NSLS from one of our student inductees, Miss Mary Murphy. Hi, hi, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. I want to say that I am truly honored to be in the presence of all, all this greatness. Some of you guys' faces I cannot see, but I feel your spirit. And I want you to know that I am truly honored, truly honored to have been chosen for this prestigious award. I look forward to serving my community. I look forward to perhaps meeting you all one day in person. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having this on this campus. And um, Dr. Baker, I've told you before, you rock, you rock, you rock. And to Dr. Smith, I'm going to dance my dance. I'm, baby, I'm going to dance my dance. Thank you all so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for, it's time for the induction of our NSLS members into the Southwest Tennessee Community College 
chapter of the National Society of Leadership and Success. Inductees, you have begun to live the mission and values upon which the NSLS was founded and have taken an active role in becoming successful leaders on campus and in our community. Next, I'm going to, I wanted to pause so you all could be aware. I'm going to read a statement to the inductees. And when I'm done reading the statement, you all need to come off a of mute and respond, I am. Here's the statement. If you are willing to strive for academic excellence, participate in community service, grow personally and professionally, and continue to live the mission of the NSLS in your everyday life, please respond, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Thank you. At this point, sorry, now we will call the names of the uh, inductees. After the names are called, we will congratulate all of our members. Alma. Katherine Gerard. Florice Ballard. Desondra Graffin Reed Green. Brandon Smith. Takosha Johnson. Martha Elena. Chadez. Mary Murphy. Alpha Amodo Berry. Chase Eli Granger. Camuri Abram. Esperanza Lindsay Bell. Jasmine Moses. Bryant Walker. Shanika Woods. Yolanda Brown. Tia Crockett. Kayla Franks. Lisa Harper. Summer Jennings. Murray Millichamp. Denick Forge. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that last name. Roberta Taylor. Please take some time to look over these next few um, students. These are students who were not able to be with us today, but if you know any of them, please be sure to congratulate them. Congratulations again to all of our inductees. I'll pass it over to Mr. Worthy. Yes, yes, yes. Again, congrats to all of the National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, this is just the beginning. This uh, concludes our first year of uh, being involved with the National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, this is an online student leadership program. Um, it was perfect. Um, as it relates to the time and the COVID. Um, I, I, I'm overjoyed just by knowing that our students that are involved in this NSLS get an opportunity to um, participate in their leadership series, which over this past year, our students had the opportunity to sit in on the uh, leadership speaking series that included former presidents uh, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. 
and just to know that our students are uh, involved in those type of uh, environments is mind blowing. And so, um, and so with that said again, thank you inductees. On behalf of Southwest, we would like to thank your support system for those that support you uh, throughout your educational journey. And so we give our deepest appreciation to the inductees and their support center and to the special guests that took time out their busy schedules to show support. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you to all of the special guests. I see you um, and we appreciate you very much. Kudos to the NSLS leadership team. Again, none of this could have been done without Tamara Boylan, Sierra Ship, and Amber Rutledge. Job well done. And in closing, you guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you.